No gloomy news today. Today we celebrate that God got the last word at the Olympics. It's going to be a time of praising God for how the truth about him, his word, and the gospel went out during the Olympic Games. Today on Headline Prayer Live. Welcome to Headline Prayer Live. I'm Judy McDonough with Intercessors for America. Today we'll have special prayer leaders who have just returned from Paris where they were ministering throughout the Olympic Games. We'll have them in a moment. But first, we always start with praising the Lord from some verses from the Bible that highlight who God is, what he's doing. One of the theme verses for IFA for the last year has been Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2. And it says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Yes, there's darkness, but the glory of the Lord is rising on his people. Let's open the lines and all praise the Lord. All participants are unmuted. Father God, we praise you. We praise you for your glory that is rising on your people all over the earth. We don't focus on the darkness. We're, focus, we're focusing on the light, the light of the Lord. And Lord, we pray that your glory would rise upon us as we seek you during this time of celebrating what you have done during the Olympic Games. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'd like to welcome Rich and Joy Swingle, who are newly returned from Paris. So Hello. glad to have you guys. So blessed to be on today. Well, we know that the Olympics started with a blasphemous, debauched tableau of people of all kinds um, of different sexual preferences uh, reenacting kind of the Last Supper. And today we're not going to focus on that. We're going to admit that there is darkness. There was that darkness. But God has gotten the last word. And today we're going to mm -hmm. focus on so many stories of Olympic, and this is just a fraction of the Christian wow. Olympians who shared the gospel. For the last several weeks, we have shared stories of Olympians sharing their faith. Today, we have three more stories of Christian athletes and then an extra bonus. Um, but I want to start with Titus, going to the book of Titus, because as I've been praying over this, I found there kind of an explanation of, you know, we've talked a lot about the blasphemy of the tableau, but today I want to pivot to, uh, well, let's just look at Titus. Let's start with Titus, um, Titus 3 verse 1. So God says, well, Paul is telling Timothy or telling Titus, remind them, that means us and believers, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, and showing humility to all men. And that's our job. And I love that as I just read it, I realized it said to speak evil of no one. And it didn't say no Christian. Mm -hmm. It said no one. And how convicting that is. And mm -hmm. In light of the tableau, let's go to the next verse, verse three. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Hmm. And I want to pause there, Rich and Joyce, and have your response, because as I've been praying the last week, I've really been thinking about 
Okay, so they did that. Why do we expect anything different? Mm -hmm. The world is dark. Yeah, the yeah. devil's at work in the world. There's the world, the flesh, and the devil at work. Why? Why are we all so surprised that people who don't know Christ would display things that are so unChristlike? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, we we are sometimes just we forget. That's why Paul called us to remember that we were once like that. But I think we forget. And um, yeah, some of it, I think for us, the shock was that it was so overt. Mm -hmm. It was so targeted. But again, that shouldn't be surprising because that's what Jesus said we would face. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't surprise IFA people because we know the Last Supper, even in an art history class, it's probably... a in many cases, not even taught that beautiful painting of the Last Supper by Da Vinci. Mm. This we've watched our, you know, in Oklahoma, they said, we're going to teach the Bible as a historical, literary and work of art. Um, that had stopped, even though it probably is in Western civilization, the most probably worldwide, probably the most important work of literature that ever was written besides mm -hmm. the spiritual truth of it. So um, so that's why I wanted to reframe us and say, let's not be surprised. Let's see Isaiah 60 at work, that the darkness is growing darker. Mm -hmm. That was 50 years ago, that would not have been in the Olympics opening ceremony. Nope, <laughs> no way. But the glory of the Lord is stronger. Yeah. Um, and let's see, I have another verse from Titus before we show the amazing videos of Olympians who are declaring God's glory. Let's look at Titus uh, 3. When the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that is speaks to humility, that as we pray about what's going on in the world, let's be humble because mm -hmm. I wasn't saved because of anything I did. Right. That's a religious spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sanctified by what I do. It's all a work of the Holy Spirit in me. Mm -hmm. And I, you're nodding. Do you want to add anything to that? I, I just am dying to tell a story of somebody who was in darkness and um, we saw their transformation firsthand. Um, there was a woman who saw my play about Eric Little and she came up to me after the play, just absolutely beaming. And earlier that day, she had encountered this, this gentleman from a Muslim nation, but he was atheist. And in the conversations, he was a vagabond, had gone to 15 different countries, had gotten into fights so bad that somebody beat him with a baseball bat, broke his wrist and damaged his lungs. So she prayed over him. And this woman telling me this story has only known the Lord for three years. So she lays hands, prays, his breathing is healed, his wrist is healed on the spot and he is just completely overwhelmed and so she begins leading him in a prayer of salvation but he says pardon dieu which means forgive me god he mm -hmm. got it he got it that he was so he was so filthy with his sin that god would do something for him when he denied God even existed. And the the transformation that I saw, I only saw him as she was taking him upstairs after, the, I didn't know any of this story. I just saw her taking him upstairs to connect him with a male discipler. And he looked back at me as I was waving to him and his face, Judy, it, you could see the Holy Spirit radiating out of this brand new baby believer. And in the play, before the play began, I told how Eric Little's middle daughter, Heather, came to the Lord after she watched her aunt have her lungs healed in Beijing. And when that happened on wow. stage, he, he just realized God was speaking to him. I never tell that. I'd never told that story before the play ever. 
um, circumstances were such that it seemed to be right there. Then on the way to the performance, this woman had sung Onward Christian Soldiers. Well, I play that song in the on the trumpet in the play. <laughs> and again, this young man is like, God is speaking to me. And the whole ending is of uh, the main character who is a enemy of Eric Little, when he comes to the Lord, he says, make me clean. And so this young man was basically watching his own salvation happen just hours after it had happened in real life. And God was just so present for him in his new hours, just hours of new faith um, just overwhelms me. And I know that possibility is there for those that we've been praying for. And um, it was just such an encouragement to me. That's Isaiah 60. Yes. Yes. That is Isaiah 60. The, um, the prevalence of Islam around the world is a darkness. Yeah. But the glory is rising. Atheism is a darkness. And the glory of the Lord is rising. Sickness is darkness. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord is rising. Yes. yes. And that's that's what this this webcast is about it's about amen. looking at what god is doing amen amen and, and, yeah go ahead he, he he wrote a song on the way to my performance and it was all about lord i want your presence and this oh, woman said goodness. he comes from a, an atheist background from a muslim nation how would he even know about the presence, to, you know, and yeah. it, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's extraordinary what the spirit will reveal to us, even, yeah. even in before we're saved or even in his very first moments of salvation. Well, and it's extraordinary that the spirit led Rich to mention the healing of lungs. That yeah. was the Lord yes. touching that man again and yes. saying, this is real. This is real. Yes. What you're experiencing is real. Um, and prompting I'm that sorry. woman to sing Onward Christian Soldiers, knowing that it was in the play. Or she didn't know that. Yeah. That she, she <laughs> didn't know how, how God, God worked so to speak to this new baby in the faith. Yeah. And how many times have we had those experiences when we've heard somebody preach something and we're like, God is speaking personally to me. So I'm prompted to share something before we, we're going to have videos of these Olympians. We're getting to that. We're building <laughs> to it. But this Sunday, um, the sermon was about a religious spirit. Mm. It was about the other son, yeah. not the prodigal son, but yeah. the son who said, hey, I don't get all this. Mm -hmm. I don't get what you're giving him. Yeah. And the pastor said, people are coming to the church. Yes. Get ready. Are you yes. ready? Yes. yes. And I'm thinking about the tableau. Are we ready for them? Because Jesus doesn't change us and then save us. That's no. right. They're going to come as transsexuals and transvestites yeah. and strippers and prostitutes. And um, are we ready to share yeah. the gospel? So mm -hmm. Lord, Make us ready. Amen. Lord, do whatever work we need so that the Holy Spirit can move freely in us yes. in everywhere where we are. And um, yes, Lord, that's my simple prayer that we would be willing vessels for your glory to rise upon us and to bring the truth to a world in darkness. Amen. In Jesus' name, let's all pray. Amen. All participants are unmuted. Thank you. Thank you so much for being changed in their spirit. All that you brought to your challenge for you again to feel your love and embrace and care for us. Telling us thank you to your long to see us. Well, I want to show the Titus verse about obedience again, because we're about to show you um, obedient athletes. So can yeah. we pull up? Um, I forget which it was the first one we showed Titus three verses one. So he says, remind them to obey 
to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing humility to all men. So I, I could go on and on about the first, well, all of these. I'm so taken by these women. So Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni. I've known about her for at least four years because one of my friend's daughters is a division one track runner mm -hmm. and at, at Liberty University, she's now graduated, but this Sydney is one of her heroes. Mm -hmm. She is vocal about her faith. And so she ran the hurdles, the 400 meter hurdles, and she made it look so easy. And I, I'm telling you, it's not. And she broke her own world record. They for didn't the think- yeah, for the second time. Six, they did six times. She, she broke the, the world record time. six times. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's remarkable what God is doing through her, what she's enabled. Well, you'll see. But, I mean, we cannot under mess. They didn't think a woman could do this. They didn't think it was possible that a woman could run the 400-meter hurdles in 50 seconds. Well, 50 seconds and change. So the cool thing is, after these medals, after the, the event, they had press conferences. And what really amazed me is that the NPR reporter <laughs> no. said, Sydney, well, maybe you'll hear this. The, see, right after the event, there's a, a something I forget what they called, but he said, I had a hard time hearing. Did you talk about your faith? Because if you didn't, I'd love to hear about your faith. This is answered prayer. Yes. Yes. An NPR reporter is yes. saying, Sydney, please talk about your faith. So let's roll the clip. It's hard to see with the lights, but there's a gentleman standing up in the back. Thanks very much, Brian Mann with NPR. Sydney, this is for you, and I apologize. I'm not sure that I heard you correctly in the mix zone. It was really loud. Um, but did you speak to your faith there and, and the role of faith in your competition? And if I just completely misunderstood you, then I apologize. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I credit all that I do to God. I, he's given me a gift. He's given me a drive to uh, just want to continue to improve upon myself. And I have a platform and I want to use it to glorify him. And so whenever I step on the track, it's always the prayer of God. Let me be the vessel in which you're glorified, whatever the result is, um, <clears throat> how I conduct myself, how I carry myself, not just how I perform. And so it's just freedom and knowing that Regardless of what happens, he's going to get the praise um, through me. And yeah, that's why I do what I do. I I mean, that's a sermon there. Yes. <laughs> and if you, I, to me, that's for all of us. I love that she said, he's given me a gift and the drive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. because let's be clear, this is her life. I mean, she you need drive. This is what she trains for all the time. She's mm -hmm. got to eat right. She's got to get up every morning and do all that training. I mean, it's amazing. And then when she said, he's given me the platform, like, and to glorify him, it goes back to Isaiah 60. We're here to glorify God, full yeah. stop. Yes. I I just was amazed. I, I, I could do all the talking, but I'm gonna let you guys talk before. And then we're gonna pray into this for all of us. Well, what blesses me so much is to me, that's, um, you know, Eric Little has been my hero since I was in junior high and he refused to run on a Sunday, expected to be the fastest man alive and prove it at the Olympics. And he said, no, the Sunday's a day to honor the Lord, not myself. And he was at that level, breaking the world record in the 400 meters. And for Sidney McLaughlin to break the world record six times, nobody's within six tenths of a second of her best time now. And, and literally you said it, Judy, the best at that distance with the hurdles in human history. And so for her to just be so bold with her faith is such, uh, such an encouragement, such an answer to prayer. And I I'm praying it unlocks something big, um, not just her, but all of these athletes, just being so bold about their faith. If every Christian in America, in the world, let's just open it up. If every Christian in the world were that bold about their faith, we'd have instant revival around the planet. That's what we need is for everyone to just be that bold about their faith. And for her to give that example, I just think is so profound. She yeah. is a huge um, role model. for yes. She... she uses Instagram as a platform to glorify God. And yeah. I know she's a role model. Joyce, what oh, were yeah. you going to say? 
I was going to say, I'd like to point uh, out her discipline, mm. which the scriptures and especially Paul talks a lot about in his letters, just the, the, the choice that she's made, you know, to train, as you said, to give over it, it, and it's written, as we know, we are not ourselves, you know, we do not belong to ourselves, but we've been purchased by the blood of Jesus that she's given over her, it, her being, her everything. As far as we know, as far as we can understand uh, from what we see of her life, um, that is, I think, uh, a role model for every Christian, certainly for every intercessor, mm -hmm. right? I mean, all, everybody listening to this call or watching this knows what it's like to get up in the middle of the night because the Lord has spoken to us about praying for something, maybe somebody we will never see or, or know, perhaps not even in heaven. But um, so intercessors understand that. But the point is we can grow in the discipline. Yes. And that's what the scriptures also teach us, that we can, we make choices every day to that. Mm. That's very convicting. I'm thinking of the verse where Paul said, um, we don't train like an athlete beating our body. But, you know, I think that we don't hear enough sermons about this, about mm -hmm. That so athletic training, we think, well, that's so not us, but why is there so much athleticism in the New Testament? Yeah. And this idea of sacrifice and self sacrifice and giving yourself over for a goal, you know, and I'm thinking of Hebrews 12 that says, uh, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us keep running the race. Mm -hmm. You know, we are Olympic athletes. We are surrounded by witnesses. We can't see them, but that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And what are, you know, it's all the work of the spirit. And yet there is, it's a beautiful paradox, maybe, I don't know, where there is effort on our part required. Yeah. Get up. Yeah, that's our three in the morning. Yeah, that's right. right. We, we, we make choices. We make choices to co-labor. Yes. Right? And that's the way God designed it, that um, we're not, you know, we're not automatons. He loves us and we make that choice. We make that choice to love him by doing what he has asked us to do. And, yeah. Joyce, could you pray for all of us as intercessors and followers mm -hmm. of the king that we would train in the way that the Lord is you know, just you pray. I don't have to tell you how to pray. But Lord, uh, we ask that you would show us how to pray. Yes. You're the Holy One. You're the Holy One of Israel and you are high and you are lifted up. And the train of your robe, it fills the temple. And when we choose to look up, we know that we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. And, and you have asked us to uh, to love you to love you by exercising our choices to obey. That's your love language, isn't it, Lord? Because you know that when we obey, we receive the best life that you have reserved for us. And we come closer and closer into the image of Christ for, uh, for that image he died for in order that it could be formed in us. And so we bless you. We wanna bless you, Father. We wanna bless you, Son. We wanna bless you, Spirit. And we come today, and in accordance with the scriptures, we present ourselves living sacrifices. That's only reasonable in light of all the things that you've done for us. And so we ask you, Lord, that we would no longer be conformed to the patterns of this world, but that we would be remapped, we would be retransformed, literally the neural networks of our mind would be uh, broken down and reformed into the pattern uh, of, of godliness that you have set forth, that we have seen in Christ and that we can have when we ask you and we ask you for it now. Transform us, renew our minds because with that renewed mind, we can therefore understand your will. It says we can we can test your perfect and pleasing will and that's what we want we want to walk in to live in to breathe in to pray in your will and and so we ask you father do this lord not because 
we're worthy, but because he, your son, is worthy. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all pray. Amen. All participants are unmuted. All participants are muted. Well, before we move on to the next one, I I want to say that it's just amazing that like Eric Little. The Lord gave Sydney the the ability to win gold, yes. which exponentially increased her platform. And yes. Eric Little said, I, I will not run on Sunday, trained for a new event, which is incredible, and won gold in that. And I just I just love that, that God does do that. Yeah. Um, and he broke the world record in that race too and beat number two by five meters. That distance wasn't bettered for 30 years. And he said the same thing. God has had given him the desire and the ability to run. Yeah. There was no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about Yemi. Yemi, y Yemisi Ogunle. I don't know how to say it. She's German. She, she is a shop German shot putter. And the first time she you you'd throw quite a few times her first throw she slipped and fell yeah and she went back and sat and sang a song to herself and we're going to hear it in a minute then she ended up i think her third throw was her personal best in an indoor arena yeah. and then it was neck and neck with a, a woman from new zealand they both threw their personal best and she yemi had hoped to throw 20 meters and when her last throw, she threw it and she sees 20 meters and she falls to the ground and pray, prays. And um, what an example. Well, you will be so blessed at her boldness at the press conference following her gold medal winning shot put throw. Let's play that video. Yeah, I mean, is it true you sing in the gospel choir? Yes. Or what song was going through your head tonight? <laughs> Um, so uh, after falling, um, I went back to my seat and I sang a song. Um, it means I almost let go. It goes like this. <laughs> I almost let go. I was quite at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. The devil really had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me. He held me close, so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. So I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace. Oh, he kept me. God kept me. God's mercies kept me. So I wouldn't let go. That was the song that I was just singing up and down. <laughs> I, I mean, that just brings me to tears. I know. Amazing. And I love I love that she mentions the devil. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about the theology of this her song, yeah. and it's so true. Yeah. And she's so full of joy. Yeah. And I do, I feel like we have to mention, I believe she's Nigerian descent, and Nigeria, Nigerian Christians um, are being persecuted. Yes. In record numbers, and they are trying to bring the world to see what is happening in Nigeria. So let's take a break from celebrating for a second. And Rich, could you pray for the, the persecuted church in Nigeria? Absolutely. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you for Yemi and her witness. And I pray that many of her brothers and sisters in Nigeria would see her witness there. I thank you, Father. I, I want to thank you that she didn't just sing five seconds of it. She saying verse and chorus, Lord, 
She just laid it out there, Father. And would you somehow use this to encourage those Christian Nigerians who are under persecution? Mm -hmm. I just pray, Father, that you would supernaturally bless them, give them encouragement, Father, and, and just protect them, Father, from those who wish them harm. We know that they are not struggling against humans, Father, but against the principalities of this dark world. And we just pray, Father, that they would be set free and worship you, even as this atheist from a Muslim background uh, gave his life to you. We pray for these captors, Lord God, to lay down their lives for you and to even even protect those ones that they have been persecuting, Father. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm. While you were praying, I felt like the Holy Spirit said um, that that is, so the persecuted church is the clash of light and darkness. Yes. And we need to remember that, that it isn't just darkness, but that there is light. Yes. And that... Um, I just read this beautiful book by Hannah Hernard, who wrote Hind's oh, Feet on High Places. And yes. she was a missionary in Israel before World War II. And um, she actually visited every settlement, Jewish and Muslim, save, save I think, 10. Wow. Under the Lord's command, o obediently. And she said, but Lord, when it was when she had completed it, she said, Lord, we only went once. And he said, as long as I have sheep, there will be shepherds to tell them the truth. And it was so <laughs> blessed me so much. That's what's happening all over the world. Yeah. God is sending his message to his sheep. Um, but I don't want to miss out if I'm one who's supposed to go, right? Amen. That's the, th uh, the thing. Um, Joyce, I want to give you a chance to comment on this. Well, she, she was so charming. <laughs> you know, it just charms you. Yeah. And uh, to there, there's something about the song. Yeah. The, the the you know God has told us to encourage each other with these songs and scriptures. But you know, we just came back from France, and one of the interesting things about the culture in France is that they love gospel music. Yes. It, it's it's uh, unusual that they do in it, but it, and there's gospel choirs that sing all around the, you know, the nation, people who profess not to be believers um, still sing these songs. And so we know God is, has prepared the soil there. And I just love that she brought this forward. I just love it. And I, I really know that God is working through that. Amen. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just wowed by God. Yes. I am too. And that, again, it was the person leading the press conference who yeah. asked her. Exactly. And what you said too, Rich, she, she kept singing. You think, oh, she's done. And she yeah. keeps singing. Yes. Um, and so it was just, and she's German. So Lord bless, yeah. Lord, we, we bless Germany in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and I have singing. I have to point out that this is an answer to our prayer for media to hear these two journalists ask questions that opened wide the gate for the, these young women to give their testimony. That is answer to our prayers. Amen. So these, both of these women have been widely featured. In fact, when I saw Sydney's press conference, I, I told my daughter and she said, oh, mom, I heard that it's viral. <laughs> so that had her... her Christians all over the world were sharing her answer yes. and Yemi too. But there was another woman who I'd love Rich. You, it's in the article that's at ifapray.org. Um, but Rich, could you tell us about Emily Froelich? Absolutely. So she, when she graduated from college, she was snatched up by the U S rowing team, national rowing team. And she turned them down because she knew she was called to be a missionary. But while she was working as a missionary in the Middle East, she had a vision. And in this vision, she knew that she was called to the Olympics. She said that God showed her there's no other event where nations come together gather together like the Olympics. And she knew that this was a part of uh, what God had made her to do, to be. And so 
she competed again. She got back into competing, and then all of a sudden she's on the Olympic team. She's off the Olympic team. She's back on the Olympic <laughs> team. She was a a um, an alternate. She didn't even get to compete in the Olympics, but God had her there as a witness. She was the only one in on her team who's a believer. There's this really touching moment in the interview, which you can see embedded in the article. The interviewer asks her, what's it like to pray with other believers? Give us a peek behind the curtain. What's it like to pray with other Olympians? And she said, well, I just don't know. I'm the only Christian on my team. But what's so beautiful, Judy, is that she she said, if somebody gives me a centimeter, I will give them the gospel. I will share my faith. I'll talk about how God's working in my life, and I'll ask to pray for that person. And she targets, she, she asked the Lord to give her, who am I to pray with? Who am I to talk with? She said, the secret is prayer. She's out there every day doing her best as an Olympic caliber athlete. She can't do anything less or she wouldn't have their respect. But she says the secret is prayer. God gives her, okay, who is that person I'm to witness to today? Who do I have the relationship with? Who do I have that connection and the trust with where I can share my faith? And so so my prayer is that she'll be praying with her teammates before too long. Amen. Let's pray. I mean, I love to hear that. Think about how our prayers are tilling the soil where the gospel is going to be planted. So we prayed for ourselves that we would share the gospel, but now let's pray for those others who are sharing the gospel and who are called to that. Amen. So Richard Joyce, which of you would like to lead us? Well, Lord, I just, yeah, we, we can see what you're doing here, Lord Jesus, in this hour, encouraging us, Father, to share our own faith. And so we just pray, Father, for those with platforms, wherever they are, athletes, businessmen and women, it, teachers, professors, people working in the grocery store, they have a platform with the people who come every day. Lord, I just pray that you would just anoint them. You know who they are, those who need that anointing, that encouragement, Father. Raise them up to be vocal about their faith, to shine the light of Jesus Christ in the dark place you've placed them. And we just pray, Father, for revival to spread across this planet, Lord God, because of this broadcast today, Father, because you're speaking into souls now, Father, we pray there would be a surge of witness in the the realm that you have given each of us, Father. May we be more bold today because of what you're doing in this hour. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all pray. Hmm. All participants are unmuted. We're really feeling you, sir. All participants are muted. Praise God. Well, now we're going to talk about an athlete who is whose response to the national anthem is a direct answer to prayer. You will remember after the George Floyd died and Breonna Taylor, many athletes uh, boycotted the national anthem. And one of them was WNBA star Brittany Griner. Is that right, Brittany? Yes. Mm-hmm. So she said she didn't think the WNBA should play the national anthem. And at one point she walked off during the playing of it. Then in 2022, she had hashish oil in vape cartridges in Russia and she was put in prison and she stayed in prison for 10 months. Um, And it became a huge diplomatic international thing where finally she was traded for some people that Russia wanted that we had held um, and had arrested on charges here in America. Um, she's, I don't know that she's a Christian. I know she is married to a woman, but the story is that we all prayed during that time and we all saw, um, the anthem being, um, dishonored and and, well, our national symbols really were attacked and 
so I want everyone to watch this video and um, we'll explain it for those on the phone line, but you'll love hearing our national anthem anyway. Uh, is there anything else, Joyce, you, you want to say or Rich to cue up the video? I, I think that um, we saw a lot of that kind of um, anti-Americanism happening uh, from citizens and we still do. And it's, um, it's distressing, Yeah. but we also know, you know, this is not what, what we died, you know, Christ didn't die for the <laughs> right. plague or anything, but, but it is an evidence, if you will, mm -hmm. of whether somebody's heart is in anger or not. And so I think that's one way in which we can look at this video. Mm. I thank you for making that point because we we don't believe that being patriotic is at all the same as our Christian faith. But we do we are grateful for the freedoms that we have in America that are celebrated by our anthem and our flag. They yeah. are symbols of freedom and the only reason we have freedom in America is because the Bible well, no, because of Jesus gives us freedom. The, yes. the Father has given us freedom in Christ. And mm -hmm. so our American freedoms are an, an echo. Yeah. Yes. Uh, of, I love that. I love that, Judy. An yeah. Echo Beautiful. of the heavenly freedom. Yes. I love that. That's in our article today. So let's <laughs> watch this video and then we'll talk about it. I just realized that that is copyright protected and we don't have the rights to play that um, as I watched with, yeah, oops. So um, sorry about that. So now we'll describe it. And I wanna always, uh, everyone who's watching, I always want to follow the law. Yeah. Um, and it, it actually Chris Kubal had said, you know the Olympics is copyrighted, right? And I said, oh yeah, but um, seeing that symbol. So what happened is, Every time, I, I mean, everybody maybe knows this, but the gold medal winner gets their anthem. And I first want to say one thing that Dave Kubal is saying repeatedly is that every nation is exceptional. Mm -hmm. God has a plan and a purpose for every nation. And I love that at the Olympics, we see that. We see the pride that people have in their nation. In Acts, it says, God has chosen where we're born and where we live. And why? So that we can be drawn to him. That's what it's all about. So I think the Olympics celebrates that, but Brittany Griner is moved to tears. And this is a woman who before said, don't even play that song, mm -hmm. but she's changed. And mm -hmm. I think it goes back to that tableau. People can change. Yes, yes. People can change. And this is an answer to our prayer mm -hmm. that through this Olympics, there has been a, a, resurgence of um, respect for America, respect mm -hmm. for freedom, respect mm -hmm. for the ideals. We don't live up to them, but mm -hmm. it's good to have ideals. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry we couldn't play the whole thing. And I'm sorry that I didn't think about that first, but I, I want to open it up to you guys for any comment and then we'll pray. Well, yeah, I mean, just another symbol of hope for us uh, as we're praying for prodigals in our lives, as we're praying for co-workers who don't know the Lord, that change can come. A Muslim atheist can come to the Lord in a single day and um, Lord, just, just, yeah, just moving into prayer, Father, just bring those healing moments, bring those epiphanies for these ones, Father God, show them how real you are and uh, draw them into your, uh, into your family, into your fellowship, Father, and help us to, to take part in that shepherding, Lord, and anoint us for the task, we pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray mm. that we would not be confused mm. about patriotism and our faith. Amen. And that we would be all about you, Jesus, mm -hmm. you first and foremost, and that you would enable us to love people who see things differently politically or morally. What, whatever needs to be done in us, Lord, to make us the glorious church you describe in Isaiah 60, to make us um, able to be the ones that I'm thinking of that verse, Lord, where it says, how will they know if they haven't heard? And mm -hmm. how will they hear if no one goes and tells them? Um, 
So Lord, do what, what, it, what needs to happen in us and help us keep things like Joyce had prayed, renew our minds about everything, Lord, that needs to be renewed. Um, submit our thinking to you. Your will be done in our lives and in our thinking. Mm. Thank you. And Joyce, did you want to pray too? I did. I, I, I do want to just give thanks for the gift of repentance. Yeah. Uh, I want to give praise for it because um, just even as we're praying and we see a change has happened mm. in, in Brittany's life, a, a change, a, a softening of, in her heart, we can see that. And of course, she went through a very difficult time in a difficult nation uh, and it can appreciate <laughs> our nation perhaps more in the room that we we have lord but but it's it's change mm. and so when we come to you and we ask you to change us as judy just did that change us so that we can be christ like in our witness to those who are very different from us oh my mm. we have the hope that you're going to do that because not only you know, are we asking you, but we know we have also been one of those who whose life whose lives were ungodly and, and you changed us. Oh, what a gift. This is nothing, Lord God, short of a miracle. Mm -hmm. Nothing short of a miracle that you can take a vessel like uh, the three of us and change us. Mm -hmm to bring glory to your name and to bring life to our lives and to the, the lives of those around us, Lord. And so I just want to, I, I just want to give thanks for that gift of repentance. Yes, Lord. It's mm. so beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let's all pray. Mm. All participants are unmuted. <laughs> Thank you for this. God is doing such a good work around the world and you two were able to be in Paris and experience um, some of what he's doing. Rich, I know that you've, um, there's a video to show and I want you to be able to explain it before, you know, cue it up in whatever way you want to. Sure. Well, it opens in Edinburgh. We got to perform at the church where Eric Little uh, preached and taught Sunday school on the 100th anniversary of him breaking the world record, we performed a scene of it at the Eric Little uh, community for a lunch they had there. And at the hour, I said, okay, Eric Little has starts the race now. And then I watched my clock and at 46.8 seconds later, I said, he broke the world record. So that was fun to do that exactly 100 years after the fact. And then the rest of them will kind of explain themselves. But that first one, I didn't really set up well. So there you go. That's the context. And then on to Paris. Here we are in Edinburgh. A hundred years later, Eric Little is still being honored here in Edinburgh. And yet all of these honors that came, he wasn't looking for any of that. There was a celebration of his life at the 900-year-old St. Giles Cathedral, and his daughter Patricia spoke there at that event at St. Giles. As people came in, the ushers would shake each person's hand, and they would find in their hand the passage that the runner Jackson Schultz put into the hands of Eric Little in the movie Chariots of Fire. It was actually given to him by a trainer, but it's 1 Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. And that was what it was really all about. Eric was honoring the Lord with his wins and with his holding back and not running and not proving himself the fastest man alive, as many thought he was. Eric was a man who set out in everything he did to honor the Lord. Good morning. 
which is Luxembourgish for good day. And we are here in one of the smallest nations of Europe with some of the greatest power. It is one of the four seats of power in the European Union. And so there are major offices where decisions are made here. Uh, there is a, a lot of decisions being made here that affect all of the European Union. So Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can stand here and that we can take authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We devote this city to you. We thank you for the gospel witness here. Jesus saves, we've seen twice, just repent. We praise you for that witness here. We pray, Father, that people in high places would come into salvation and sanctification, that decisions would be made for your kingdom, that globalist decisions, decisions toward a one world government would be unraveled and stopped in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that this would not come into the earth before your time, that the great revival, the great awakening that is already flowing that this would not be stopped or postponed, but that you would be magnified and glorified through this city to the whole of the European Union and beyond, Lord. And we pray it all in Jesus' name, amen. This is the Court of Justice for the European Union. So this is the highest court in all of the European Union. And Lord Jesus, we just declare this for you, Father. We pray, Lord God, that righteous judgments would be passed, that people who know you, who are sanctified, who are in relationship and fellowship with you, would be making these decisions, Father. Raise them up in this land, in all of Europe, Father. Bring the justices here who would declare righteously. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. This is a church plant that is growing and they had a vision to use beyond the chariots to reach out into the community. They had 5,000 flyers that they have handed every single one of them out. I don't even have a sample to show you. One of the team members was named after Eric Little and they have put together this bag. I'm about to weep. They've got this bag they put together with all of these things that everyone who comes to the play is gonna receive. We are at the Église Baptiste, Rue de Lille, and we are one block away from the Musée d'Orsay. So, Nicole, tell us a little bit about this church and what's going on here. This church is the oldest Baptist church in Paris, and Musée d'Orsay is the Impressionist Museum. They house all of the National Gallery of the Impressionist Art and um, they have created an entire art district here in the neighborhood. All of the streets that are parallel and perpendicular are considered the arts district. And so this church finds itself in the middle of um, art goings on. And this evening, they are hosting a art gallery open house. And they have transformed the inside into an art gallery and have advertised for people to stop by for uh, some snacks and a chat and we're expecting um, to run into a lot of people and uh, network and I'm also really excited because Rich here is going to like show up in character and Eric Little is going to make a couple <laughs> guest appearances this evening right here. So pray that uh, many are drawn, those who are just drawn to the art will be drawn to the kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. And we pray it in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Rich, I'm, and Joyce, I'm so struck by the fact that you're doing what Sydney said. God has given you gifts. Mm. And God has given you a platform. And that little church is using their platform and yes. their place as part and using the arts. It's really culminating what we're all talking about is wherever we are, whoever we are, God has given us the means and the opportunities to share about who he is. And you know, there were given us. There were two executives from the Musée d'Orsay who attended that night and they told the gentleman who had organized everything, you know, we miss that 
monthly concert that you guys would give. Can you do that again? And it sounds like that is going to be a monthly thing that people at the museum are going to be involved in. So that's exciting. Oh, it's very exciting. Thank you for sharing with us the other things you're doing outside of IFA to spread God's word. So Joyce, blessed. is there anything you want to say about, about that? I just want to say we all have that opportunity to bloom where God is, has us and to reach people. We just never know yeah. and who God is going to reach. A, a, a story that always gives me uh, a lot of um, motive, if you will, and, and, and um, propels me forward is, is the fact that a, a man who, who became uh, very highly placed in, in a, a, a evangelical denomination uh, he, his father was a traveling, uh, I guess you'd say evangelist. And he traveled with his whole family to a little place in, in Ohio and it was bad weather and no one came out for the revival. There was no one there, but the family and the one minister who had invited them. But this man's father got up and preached the sermon anyway, and he ministered anyway. And that was the night that our friend became a believer and put his trust in Jesus Christ when his father gave the invitation in this empty tent, uh, which was certainly not empty, but filled <laughs> with the Holy Spirit. So we sometimes don't know because we don't see numbers or we don't understand all that God has planned, but he He is so magnificent and, be, and beyond us all. And, and we get to have a relationship with this kind of God. Oh, it's amazing. I keep thinking about years ago, um, I went to get a manicure. This was 20 years ago. And the manicurist was telling me about her life. And I said, well, um, you know about Jesus, right? I was so, she said, no, <laughs> we are in a post-Christian world. Yeah. And people don't know anything. I That's mean, right. it's very possible that those people in the tableau had no idea about the Last Supper. No, I, it's very, so, and I'm not using myself as a good example um, because I was afraid. So I want to end this with praying again for all of us because, and to understand that we're, we're past where people know anything. Yeah. They just <laughs> don't, they don't know. To that point, I'll say that there is a, we we had the opportunity to see a beautiful painting in the Louvre, mm. which is Peter, and he is mourning the fact that he has den denied the Lord. And right next to him is a rooster. And uh, our friend, Nicole, who you saw in the video, says that most Parisians, most people from France who look at that assume, because the rooster is a symbol of France, that this man in the picture is mourning for France. And, and so that's the world we're in. The, the common iconology, iconography rather uh, of Christianity may not be understood if it's even recognized. There's a great article about what's happening in Oklahoma. We published it over the weekend. It's five lies about the Bible in Oklahoma schools. And it's great to read because well, it, on this topic of understanding ways that we can bring the Bible, bring what we believe into conversations um, in other ways. This has been a great time of prayer and celebrating yeah. what God has done. And I'm grateful for that tableau because I think it woke us a, a <laughs> lot of people up. Yes. yes. It, you, we, can't, it, we can't deny that this, there is darkness. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, Jesus said that verse, or was it Jesus who said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of what Jesus is saying today. And I also don't want to have a hard heart to what he's calling me to do. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I pray a blessing on this community, the blessing of your glory rising upon us. And I pray, Lord, that we we would be willing vessels, like Sydney said, willing vessels in your hand. And I pray that we'd be like Yemi, that we would sing our praise songs to yeah. you, that we would be bold 
and we would let people know what you have done in our lives and that we wouldn't be ashamed that maybe the devil has had us, but you won't let go of us. I pray, Lord, that we would be like Emily Froelich, that we would go wherever you send us, that we wouldn't make assumptions that you want us to, to be in one kind of mission field when you want us to be in another. Yes. I pray, Lord, that we would be part of what you are doing, not only in America, but around the world. Thank you for the blessing it is to know you. Thank you that you saved us, not because of what we have done, but because of who you are, because you created us to be in a loving relationship with you. Lord, help us share that with others. And Lord, I pray for anyone who's discouraged today and who um, just looks at the world and is thinks it's all bad. Encourage their hearts and reveal reveal to them what you are doing in their personal lives. Reveal how your glory is rising in their circumstances, in their circles. Thank you, Jesus. It's to you be the glory always. And in your mighty, precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Rich and Joyce, thank you for joining us today on Headline Prayer Live. Thank we, you so much. What a blessing. To be with you and the intercessors is our privilege. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Don't miss Pray with America's Leaders on Thursday with Chris Kubal. And for now, we will close with your prayers. All participants are unmuted.